So without further ado, um, we are going to uh, to dive into the open process automation topic. And uh, to kick that off, I'm uh, just going to have a little chat with a, a colleague of mine, Anil Ali. So Anil is the forum director for the Open Process Automation Forum of the Open Group. He completed his undergraduate work at Texas A&M and is an MBA candidate at the University of London. He's based in Houston, Texas, and has served in various engineering and business development roles within the process automation industry over the last 10 years, primarily working with manufacturers and system integrators to deliver solutions at, to end users around the globe. And you'll hear how relevant that experience is when we talk about what the forum was doing. So first of all, uh, as tradition would have it, a warm welcome from the open group for Anil Ali. You'll have to take my virtual applause, but uh, Welcome, Anil. Great to see you. Yeah, thanks, Steve. So, so um, th this is a day that you've helped put together, um, getting the messages out that we want and, and interesting topics for people. So um, tell us a little about the Open Process Automation Forum in the Open Group and, and what we're doing. So good morning, Steve, and, and good morning to everyone. Thanks for the introduction. And uh, so the, the Open Process Automation Forum, Steve, is a consortium now of over 100 member organizations that have gathered to uh, to contribute to the development of the OPAS standard. And it, I think that it's been ongoing. It's been an ongoing initiative now for uh, nearly five years and even longer. So in the making and kind of in the run up to beginning development of the OPAS standard. Right. Right. So you mentioned the standard. That's clearly the, the main focus for the for the folks working in the forum. So tell us a little about it and, and importantly, um, why do we need it? Okay, so <laughs> the the OPAS standard, uh, Steve, is is the deliverable of the open process automation forum. And the standard is meant is purposed to address um uh interoperability and application portability and, and system orchestration and kind of those are the three main themes you know for versions of 1.0 2.0 3.0 but more importantly it it allows uh current owners of process automation systems to inject new technology and choose from uh, it gives them more options for selecting uh best in breed technologies when uh when looking to swap out components or upgrade or you know things like that right. uh, so that that's the that that is what the opas standard will accomplish okay that, that's that's great to hear yeah i remember the uh, the early days of getting it going and some of the uh, real hard business uh, requirements and uh, and challenges that there were for the for the industry so so where are we at in the development of the sta standard what stage are we at Sure. Okay. So, where the OPAS standard now is in, in the stage of development is, uh, and I'll just recap very quickly. Uh, you know, in 2019, the forum published version 1.0 of the standard, which was purposed to address configuration portability. That was the overarching theme. And then in 2020 and uh, this year in 2021, the forum released versions 2.0 and 2.1. And when combined, uh, those two versions of the standard address the theme of, uh, sorry, configuration portability. Version 1.0 uh, focused on the theme of interoperability, and the forum is now beginning uh, the the work of, of writing and developing version 3.0 of the standard. Purpose to address uh, the overarching theme will be uh, system orchestration. So it's it's an exciting time, you know, within the development and the life cycle of the OPAS standard. And uh, you know, it, it's uh, it, I, I recommend everyone to you know get a copy and, and start reading. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a great piece of work so far, and uh, still much to be done. So, uh, what's on, what's on the horizon for the for the work on the standard? Sure. What, so, what version three of the standard, Steve, uh, will have the overarching theme is system orchestration. There will be three underlying themes uh, that will be addressed. Three additional parts that will be added to the standard. Part seven will focus on physical platforms, so the actual physical manifestation of, of computing, of uh, computing modules, computing resources, and what that will look like. Um, and uh, part eight will focus on application portability, and part nine will focus on system orchestration and, and kind of like uh, automatically 
um, provisioning software and patching and updates and, and kind of things like that that we'll get more into detail um, later on today. Okay, good, good. So sounds like a lot of work's been done. Um, how how big is this standard, and and how how can our uh, audience get hold of it if they uh, if they want to uh, dive in? It's uh it, it's enormous. <laughs> we're we're standing at just over uh, eight hundred pages now, um, and that's it's a pure technical standard. And you know there, there's there's not one person that can consume the entire standard so you know it will take um you know multiple engineers from organizations to consume that standard and it spans many different technical areas within process automation and control systems engineering and uh, so you know it, it's a uh, it, it's an enormous it's an enormous standard and uh, the audience can obtain a copy by going to the open group library and uh, you know it's it's free to download. Uh, you can get a a, a ninety day uh, free evaluation copy. And you know I recommend everyone to to to, to access it that in that manner and, and to get a copy of it. Okay, and hopefully many will. And when they do, um, there are bound to be questions. Um, and I know you know there's a lot of questions that that uh, get worked on in the forum itself. But for those who maybe aren't Aren't members of the forum? Uh, where, how would they get their questions answered? Well, that's that's a really good question. You make a very good point, Steve. So you know when you're when you're navigating your way through the OPAS standard and the uh, you know 15, 16 different parts of the standard and the 800 or so pages, there of course there are bound to be questions uh, of a technical nature and maybe also not of a technical nature as well. Uh, but uh, folks within uh, folks within the 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 industry or, uh, or the readers can go to uh, they can send a query to ogspecs at opengroup.org and that will be received by myself and we can distribute those within the forum to uh, to ponder on and you know that that's a that's a really good avenue to get uh, technical and uh, non-technical questions answered while reading right. the standard right and we really do have uh, in this in this group we really do have a a great gathering of industry experts from um, from with with all sorts of um, specialties and, uh, and and experience. So it's a great place to get those answered. Um, so, okay, well, perfect intro to the day, Anil. Thank you, and I know we'll uh, we'll see, we'll see you later uh, on the on the first panel, and then uh, I think you're going to moderate the second one. So we'll we'll see some more of Anil Anil today. But in in the meantime, uh, thank you, Anil Ali. Thanks, Steve. Okay, great. Thanks, Anil.